Hi, this is Amy Lewis with Cisco, and this is today's episode of Engineers Unplugged. And with us today, we've got Dr. Jay Metz and Scott Lowe, and I'm going to let them take it away. Uh, ready? Ready. Are you are, are you ready, audience? Because this is going to be a good one. Excellent. Thank you very much. Hey, Scott. Hey, Jay. How are you doing? Excellent. This is going to get a little weird. It will. <laughs> and not to mention a little disruptive. So anyway, you remember we were talking a couple months ago about where the data center was going to go, and we were just... just brainstorming completely out of the box, right? Just think of what is it going to look like in 20 years, you know, 10 years, 20 years, that kind of thing. And we were talking about distribution of, of servers, compute, storage, virtualization, and at the next level. I mean, beyond just what we're at right now. And, um, and we, were, we were really getting into it. So um, now I think what we're going to do is we're going to talk about that a bit more. So why don't you go ahead and start off and tell our audience exactly what we were thinking about doing back then. Sure, absolutely. So you can start drawing on the board. What, what we, you know, if I recall correctly, what we were talking about is that the, the introduction of these these server side uh, caches, you know, things like Flash inside the server, where it actually does storage caching, and then uh, new algorithms and new technologies that enable you know distributed uh, cache consistency across sites and uh, data migration between different layers of the storage and uh, networking all of these server side caches together, right? Um, that we felt like it, it really created this whole new, um, I think you used the term pre-SAN at one point, you know, is there, a, is there a storage network before it hits the storage network? Um, I think you had some other terms as well, but this is kind of what we were thinking, you know, you've got some, some server-side caching going on here of some sort, right? There's a, you know, a couple different products in that space, uh, and, and, and they're, they're putting data there, hot data, and it's, it's being responding very quickly. And then, it, and then what happens when you begin to network these caches together, right? and they begin to have some distributed cache consistency across all of them, and then we start moving applications around, and, and then we got data down here. It, it creates some, some really interesting possibilities. I mean, uh, why don't you expand on that a bit? Well, I think one of the things that winds up happening is that we find ourselves in a position where we currently have a linear environment. So we right now we have a server, in my wonderful drawing techniques, we have a server with its own in-server storage cache, another one with its own server cache, and then what we do is we're not only networking those servers together, but we're networking the caches together, we're networking the storage together. Well, that's a linear way of doing things. What we're also talking about, though, is what happens if we take this into a non-linear way of doing things. In other words, we create, we, we, we uh, abstract the network of this in-server storage caching so that we create essentially what is a pre-SAN SAN. So that the storage, we, we talk about tiering and that kind of thing, but a pre-SAN SAN allows us to have the ability and flexibility of being able to access the data on demand anywhere because of the inherent intelligence of the nonlinear systems of these pieces communicating to each other dynamically. And what that allows us to do is create a fractal level of our data center. So right now we can create certain hierarchical tiers, but hierarchies have a problem, right? And that problem is scale. We know you can only get so big, it becomes like a pyramid, right? You can only have so many layers. A fractal level is the same, is keeping the same effective environment at the consistent form at larger and larger scales which allows us to transfer those kinds of, of patterns of behavior from one side to another side seamlessly because it's all part and parcel of the same process. Right, right, that's, that's really fascinating stuff. And you know, I, I just, uh, it's amazing because when we, when we start to, you know, just like virtualization, we, we decouple the workload so we can move the workload from here to here as, as we decouple the data from the workload and we decouple the data from the physical location, uh, you know, a lot of very interesting things suddenly become up. We insert these layers of abstraction, and suddenly, yeah, you, you, you've got this incredible workload mobility. And then, you know, what what if we bring into this? I think one of the things we other we talked about as well was not only what happens if we begin to to network this cache here, but what happens if the actual networking connectivity becomes distributed, right? Yeah. You know, we're moving into this highly commoditized x86 based world where everything runs on the x86, x86 processor. It's all you know, using VMware's terminology, software defined, right? What happens if, you know, a node becomes not just compute, right? But now a node is compute, storage, and network connectivity, right? 
And then we get true scale out, not only from a compute perspective, but scale out from a network connectivity, maybe even a network throughput. We get a scale out from a storage connectivity and a storage throughput, right? And, uh, and it's, all, it's all woven together with this high speed, set of high speed connections, you know, because we're moving from 10 gig to 40 gig to 100 gig, and, and who knows where it goes from there. With ever decreasing latencies, uh, it, 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 it's pretty interesting stuff. It's incredibly interesting stuff because when we start talking about uh, software defined networks, we're really focusing up here. And the storage side is often left as an afterthought. And that winds up being a problem because realistically the storage, if you can't access the storage, if you can't access the data, you really don't got anything. You just have a lot of bits moving around that aren't doing anything, wandering around the network, bumping into each other defined by some software piece, but you got to have meaning to that information and that's down here. By putting that kind of abstraction into the storage, and I'm, you, have to, you have to think about this as not just three servers are inside a data center. This could be three servers in a data center, three racks in a data center, three data centers in an environment, three massive, broad, scalable elements, all having fractal layer caching of the storage, which allows us the ability to communicate, not just on this networking side, but the storage side, and create an immensely robust data center network where we're not, we can't even use the word data center anymore. It's, it's a worldwide global system at that point. Yeah, yeah I absolutely agree and that's, uh, that's really cool stuff. I can't wait, to, uh, can't wait to see it come around. I'm doing my best. Wait till Thursday. Okay. okay. All right, give over the mic. So, uh, great job you guys. So, okay. last question, Magic 8-Ball, what do you predict? Any predictions? Uh, didn't hear what you said. What? You said mag Magic 8-Ball, any predictions? Oh, Magic 8-Ball, Magic 8-Ball. Um, I, I don't think it's going to take that long. I, I think that within 10 years, this is going to be realistic. How about you, what do you think, Scott? Yeah, I, I agree, I don't think it's that far off. A lot of the components are already in place. It's just a matter of stitching the components together and uh, lots of companies, including our own companies, are working very heavily on that stuff, absolutely. So, great episode of Engineers Unplugged. Follow us, hashtag Engineers Unplugged, and definitely check out at Scott Lowe, at Dr. J Metz. We'll see you next time.